Welcome back everyone to Campfire Tales. Tonight's story is about an individual by the name of Owen, who is a park ranger at a national park who experiences something that is outright ridiculous. Unbelievable, if you will. You decide. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss this. If you like true and creepy pasta scary stories, make sure to subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up. Now let's get spooky. The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations, as their music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His finger rested casually on the radio dial, and the palm on his gear shifter. It had been an unpleasant night. Tears stained his cheeks. Their size matched the size of raindrops that harmonized his window. But that was Owen. Everything he did was big. Big tears, big gestures, big muscles. If he had a motto, that would be it. He loved hard and fell even harder. The lights from his Jeep reflected off the rain-drenched pavement. The yellow lines seemed to jump up at him as he passed over each. He always drove down the center of the road, a.k.a. Plain Pac-Man, when it was dark like this outside. There were limited streetlights around the park, part of a national movement to limit light pollution in federally funded areas. Owen was all for whatever kept the park from becoming the Vegas version of the park. He didn't want brand name stores in the town. He did not want trailers the size of houses taking up the campgrounds. He just wanted nature to be enjoyed the way it was intended to be. Which is to say, with a cup of coffee, a tent, and a beautiful woman next to him. The backpack on the seat next to Owen trembled at the rumble of the jeep. Owen glanced over to it and placed his hand onto it. He could still feel the little box under the fabric. Another fresh round of tears broke free from his eyes. He wiped them as he passed by the sign that stated Brightness Falls, the town site to the park. It was only about 10 kilometers away. He loved this town. It was the only one he could ever see himself living in, the quintessential mountain town. He had been lucky enough to get a job there at the park as a ranger, when they had opened the park back up after the whole incident with the writer. And every day since, he had been living his best life. They were paying him to hike, swim, yell at idiots, and take care of the magical place. If he could have sex with the park, he would have. Which, to be fair, felt like he was on his way to do so. Every morning he would get up, make coffee, drive to another part of the park to enjoy the sunrise. Then he'd break out his phone and record another episode of his podcast, Good Vibrations, pairing morning sunrises with the Beach Boy songs. The gist of the show was that he had described where he was, the sunrise, his coffee, and finally which Beach Boy song went best with all. It was wildly unpopular, but he did it for himself. And if the world wasn't as sophisticated as he was, then they could sail on. Caroline was supposed to join him today. It was episode 100. She was going to be his first official guest on the show. But that wasn't going to happen now. Not after last night. Their fight had been such a huge blowout, he had ended up staying at the ranger's outpost overnight. The mosquitoes were very thankful for it. Owen's back wasn't. The cots at the outpost were garbage, and not built for a man of his size. Once you start exercising your shoulders, 
they're going to be too big for just about everything. The number of door frames he bumped into now was embarrassing. But despite the constant battle with door frames and all the other narrow built stuff in the world, it was well worth it. Owen had been born skinny, and he had been that way for most of his life. It drove him crazy, mainly the whole never being able to talk about it without fears of people not understanding. You're allowed to say you need to lose some weight in society, but you can't say that you need to gain some. It's a massive trigger that makes all sorts of people give you dirty looks. You'd think that you had just told them that you were giving squirrels outhouse hand jobs or something. The rain increased its onslaught on the vehicle's window. Droplets the size of Owen's nipples hammered the glass. He clicked the wipers on, and the two long blades cut through the rain with lethal water force leaving a clear view to see for only a second before they completed their journey back to where they had started. The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations, as their music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His finger rested casually on the radio dial, and the palm of the gear shifter. Owen shook his head. Were they playing the same song twice in a row now? That was odd. But what do you expect from an all-Beach Boys satellite radio channel? Another fresh round of tears broke free from Owen's eyes. He wiped them as he passed the road sign that stated Brightness Falls, the town site for the park, which was only about 10 kilometers away. What? Owen muttered to himself. The local kids must have been farting around with the park sign again. They had done it as well for the park's annual festival, Bright Fest, when it had been on. They had changed the sign to Brightfest to Girthfest. Most people laughed it off, though a few always were upset about the B was missing. They didn't think that their tax dollars should have to pay to buy a new letter. Owen had been in the prior group. He had been the first to post it on his podcast social media pages. He had gotten a lot of likes. Who knew people liked Girth? He had suspected it for years, but he had never received that large of a confirmation. Still, monkeying around with the festival sign was one thing. Changing a distance marker that was outside of the town site, well that was a federal fine. He would have to scare them stray with his best park ranger voice. Owen grabbed his walkie from his backpack, double checked the power and channel, then squeezed the talk button. Hey Beck. You up yet? Nothing but a static buzz greeted him. Beck? Again, nothing but static. That was odd. She was always up before him. It was her job to make sure that all the animals being tracked by the park rangers were nowhere near the town or popular visiting locations within the park. It never ended well when a bear or moose got too close to a group of tourists. The tourists would seem to lose their common sense when it came to dangerous animals. The bear, on the other hand, just wanted to eat, and a stupid tourist is a delicious snack. So, Beck made sure to keep the two groups apart. She had liked to get up early to do so. Beck, you there? Owen said as he tried one last time. A strange static echoed through the walkie. Owen turned the radio volume up and held the walkie up to his ear. The sound reminded him of what the dial-up internet at his parents' house used to sound like. Lots of weird, strange clicks and noises. The Beach Boys harmonized their intent to have good vibrations as their music filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His finger rested casually on the radio dial and his palm on the gear shifter. The walkie was now gone. Owen shook his head. What the hell? Another round of tears on Owen's face. He stared at the brightness fall sign as it passed by, still only 10 kilometers away. Owen slammed on the brakes and glanced behind him at the sign. One sign change was one thing, 
but there wasn't that many signs between the ranger station and the town. The farting kids would have had the ad signs to change. He wasn't sure that they had that kind of dedication to prank. But what was with the music? Why did the radio keep going back to the same song? Plus, it wasn't even on a few seconds ago. Then there was the walkie that seemed to have vanished from his hand. Owen patted his back. He could feel the radio along with the little box inside. So, how had it gone from his hand back to in his backpack? Owen reached into his bag for his cell phone and he turned back around. The Beach Boys harmonized and filled the inside of Owen's Jeep. His finger rested on the radio dial and the palm of his gear shifter. Tears ran down Owen's face as he was moving again, despite having just stopped to look back at the sign, the very sign that had just passed by again stating the town was only 10 kilometers away. What the Kokomo? Owen muttered as he smashed the radio power button with his fist and drove his foot hard on the brakes. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and the palm on his gear shifter. Tears on his face. The 10 kilometer away sign passed by again as if it was giving him the finger. Well, this was just great. He was in some kind of Groundhog's Day loop thing. At least, that's what it had seemed to be. But why had he sometimes restarted it quicker than others? Apparently, turning the radio off was a big no-no. Rain pelted the window. Instinctively, Owen turned the wipers on. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and the palm on the shifter. Tears on his face. There was the 10 kilometer sign again. Okay, so, no wipers. This time, when the rain got harder, he left the wipers off despite how hard it was to even see. He squinted to look through the massive drops. Okay, good so far. He glanced in the rearview mirror. The sign was fading into the background. Owen laughed. Take that, you stupid frickin' Groundhog Day loop sign. He flicked the sign the middle finger and laughed again. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial and the palm on his shifter. Tears on his face. And there was that stupid frickin' Groundhog Time looping sign. Again, he left the wipers off when the rain started and watched the sign fade into the distance behind him. Now what? What had been done to cause the loop to restart last time? Giving the sign the finger? Who knew signs could be so sensitive? So, what should he do? He really hated all this paranormal stuff, but he... Beck, she loved this garbage. He grabbed the walkie and remembered that he had tried calling her and got nothing but weird sounds. So, she wasn't going to be much help. This all felt way out of his comfort zone. He liked the Beach Boys, and lifting heavy things and putting them down neither seemed acceptable to whatever was happening to him. The thunderous crack echoed through the jeep cab over the sound of the rain pelting the roof. Owen tried to see between the raindrops what it was. It wasn't a sound that was local to the park. He had never heard it before. It sounded like something massive snapped in two. Shoot. Owen whispered as he watched a commercial airplane plummeting to the ground. It streaked across the front window of his jeep. The plane's engines blasted red, obviously on fire. Definitely not normal. He couldn't even remember the last time that he even saw a plane fly over the park. He was pretty sure it was a no-fly zone anyway since the whole Brightness Falls incident. He watched as the plane pulverized itself into the side of a mountain not too far from town. A trail of fire followed it up. The forest around the crash site smoked. Shoot. Even with the rain like this, the fire that size was going to spread easily throughout the forest. It had been years since they had had money to remove all the underbrush and kindling. 
The government had felt forced firefighting wasn't worth the investment, but that tax breaks for corporation CEOs was. As Owen watched the fire spread down the mountain, his anger grew, and he really wished that he could punch a couple of dozen politicians in their faces. There was a blur through the raindrops as something ran from the tree line to the road. Distracted by the plane crash and the fire, Owen reacted slowly. As a moose met the front of Owen's jeep, its height sent the poor animal careen over the top of the vehicle. Blood from the unfortunate creature mixed with the rainwater. Owen badly wanted to turn the wipers on, but... The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio dial in the palm on his shifter. Tears on his face. The moose's blood was gone, but the sign was back. He grabbed his radio. He had to let somebody know about the plane crash that was about to happen. But maybe he should stop it. He pressed the walkie button and was greeted by the strange noise again. Sweet surfing safari! Owen yelled as he rolled the window down before he could throw the walkie out. The Beach Boys harmonized. His finger rested on the radio dial, the palm on a shifter. And then there was the sign. He wanted to punch every inch of the inside of his Jeep, then get out and punch everything out on the outside too. He closed his eyes and took a slow, deep breath. He wondered what Caroline was doing. He wasn't sure how many loops he had gone through so far, but it felt like forever since he had last seen her. And while he was still pissed off about the night before, he loved her. Crisis and time loops tend to remind you of the important things in life. Owen opened his eyes as a sign passed by again. So, the moose. What was he supposed to do about the moose hitting the jeep? Was he supposed to do something or not do something? He ignored the rain as he thought about it. He was actually getting used to driving through the big drops. After passing by the sign at least 30 more times, he had lost count after the first 23. His frustration was reaching Hulk levels. If he could shred his pants and grow 20 sizes larger, he'd gladly do so. At least, that would be the cathartic release. This was, well, it was hell. His own personal Owen hell. No Caroline, a forest fire, plane crash, murderous moose, broken radio, missed podcast opportunity, the reoccurring song was killing his love of one of his favorite Beach Boys songs. And worst of all, he felt like a complete idiot not being able to figure any of this out. He knew that he wasn't book smart, but now he was wondering if maybe his mom had been humoring him about being special. He was pretty sure a brick sitting here on the gas pedal could do a better job than he could. He had tried opening his window by various heights, slowing down, shifting gears, turning the AC on and off, and a few dozen more he couldn't even remember now. The worst part about it was, even if he had gotten past the moose, then what? He would have to figure out another thing. He'd have to start this whole process over. The more that he had thought about it, the more shocked he was that he had made it this far. Frustrated and taking a page from the Brick's book, Owen hammered on the gas. What if he killed himself, drove himself straight into a tree? Would that do anything? The Jeep passed 88 miles per hour. Maybe he could. The moose bounded over the road in the Jeep's rearview mirror. Owen threw his hands in the air. Yes! Take that, you stupid object! Owen yelled at the sign as it vanished from the rearview mirror. He had done it. He had finally gotten past the moose and out of the loop. Except... Crap. The Beach Boys harmonized. Owen's finger rested on the radio and the palm on the shifter. Tears on his face. The sign. Like a giant middle finger passing by the jeep.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's story. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Click on that bell so you never miss another video. I narrate anything from true to creepypasta stories. I do a little bit of anything and everything. And I do it all for you. Have a good night and stay spooky.